Do you, do you think focusing on culture actually gives you a benefit when it comes to communicating climate change? Because so often we talk about the economic and political aspects and particularly everything that's going on in the um, International Conference Centre a few hundred metres away from us. Do you think or do you feel focusing on the cultural aspects and what might change if climate yeah. change affects parts of the world is, is important? Absolutely and in fact it is the fundamental message that we bring to this COP. We, we, we been, this is the third one we've been to and we are starting to despair that uh, the language that is used, the communication of the threat of climate change, in fact misses the vast majority of populations around the world. Because it, it, yes, it's very serious that our polar caps are melting. Yes, it's serious that ocean temperatures are rising and, and levels are uh, are going to change coastal communities. But at the end of the day, it's almost too remote. It's, it's almost irrelevant from the normal person's life's experience. But when you start to talk about that cultural change that will inevitably occur because of climate change, you are talking about something that becomes more real. And I, I often use the example of uh, the ozone battle, because uh, if you recall that in years gone by, you, one would run out into the sun at summertime and you'd put bathing oil on you or sun baking oil and, and you wouldn't wear a hat. But now most children running out into the playgrounds of schoolyards wear broad brim hats and UV cream. Now that is a cultural change and you can describe that change in terms of that, that ozone threat. It's exactly the same with climate change, that uh, there are physical implications which will change the very way we go about organising ourselves. Is, is it as simple as that though? Because you're an Australian and you've just mentioned a, the, the Sun programme which was very successful in Australia in cutting yeah. rates of skin cancer. Yeah. But, but surely that's easier than trying to convince all Australians ditch the 4x4, ditch the uh, high petrol guzzling yep. car yep. And, and take a, take a whole new trajectory. Look, it is absolutely true that in order to get climate change to be understood by the ordinary citizen, we start, have to start talking in meaningful terms what it means to them. Now, in, in countries where there are fire threats, and, and take uh, not only Australia, which is, it's, we are renowned to have the summer bushfires, but lots of the US, lots of Canada, uh, Greece, Turkey, you can think of these countries that have uh, bushfires or forest fires. Now, the coincidence of extreme fire events worldwide is seen to be an example of climate change. Now, if you then start to interpret those extreme events in the terms of, for instance, my insurance policy. Yep. You know, every insurance policy of every Australian has virtually doubled in 18 months because of the appalling bushfires we had in, in January, February 2010. Now, I'm sure that that can be replicated around the world, the Californian fires, the Canadian fires, the Greek fires, and you can then see that there are ways of communicating what the implications of that change are to ordinary people. So when people complain, oh, look, oh, we don't need to do anything about this because it's going to be too costly, it's going to change our our life to uh, you know, carbon taxes or getting out of the car they want to drive into some smaller fuel efficient car. If they don't do it, if they understand if they don't do it, it's going to hit them harder. You know, take a gentle step now and avoid the harsh step later, the more expensive step later, then that is managing our cultural response to climate change responsibly. And that's what we're talking about, managing the change, adapting so that we can ensure that the societal values that we uh, treasure, that we want to maintain, can be protected while we act responsibly.